Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing Monster Energy Supercross 4 and we are starting career mode. I'm going to be using my own rider and we're going to be here in Anaheim. This is part of the career mode, it's the beginning part and it's called The Futures. We're starting off as a rookie and we'll work our way up. One of the top riders in Monster Energy Supercross. Listen to the roar of the fans packing the stadium. So introductions are over and we now wait for the grid to drop any moment now. Perfect start, absolutely brilliant start. A little bit of argy-bargy as this Grand Prix begins as we give the Monster Energy sign a bit of a whack as we just move out of the way. As a whole shot goes to Grant, the very first one of the season. So this is the future mode or uh, the basically the prequel to the actual career itself where you start off as a very young rider working your way up through the field. And I must say, I quite like it so far. There's a lot of challenges and there's a lot of uh, ideas and a skill tree to work on, improving the bike, etc, etc. So the bike can just be improved by using credits, which I have quite a lot of credits from the four-hour live stream from just last week. So it did help for me to uh, get a better bike, but I didn't use all of the points. I didn't want to just make a completely overpowered motorcycle. I wanted to at least keep it relatively competitive with the opposition. Now, I know in the past, especially for like the MotoGP games, if you upgrade the bike, you're pretty much unstoppable. And I, I wouldn't rather not have an unstoppable series where I just completely dominate every single race. I'm much more into the uh, close quarters combat fighting and uh, making things interesting. Now, I didn't really upgrade the motorcycle much at this point, but we still do end up having a good race here. I mean, we're leading this Grand Prix quite comfortably as the time being. Mess up the flow a little bit there, and as you can see, the riders behind Wolf and Lopez are right there. I think it's Thomas Wolf. I've uh, forgotten his name. The, these aren't real rides, I don't believe. This is just made up for the particular uh, career mode, part of the futures. And of course, we are using my own custom Yamaha as the, as the uh, moment stands for. But when I move up to the big leagues and I'll probably go to the 250s first, I will probably sign with an actual official team. I much more prefer using an official team rather than the, uh, the fake liveries and just the fake bikes that you get. Of course, using the Yamaha course because it's just a preference of mine I'm a big Yamaha fan so it made sense for me to go for that one used a little bit of a red accent on the handlebars and on the grips something different I tried I really like it actually I think it looks like a nice combination you see my rider at the beginning that is actually me I'm using uh, my own likeness I'm rocking the number 461 because that's my social media handles 47 is the number I use in uh, motorbike games but of course with the MXGP and Monster Energy Supercross sporting three numbers, it made sense to chuck in the whole 461. But I'm just uh, currently recording the voiceover after the fantastic MotoGP race, which I will be doing a video on later on tonight, so keep an eye out for that one. That'll be on at 8pm. And that's basically me just talking about the uh, performance of the race, uh, the performance of the riders, and how the race went in general, because I had a whopping good ton. Well, we've got 12 minutes remaining here in this Monster Energy Supercross 4 Race 1 here in Anaheim on board the Yamaha. And of course, as I've mentioned, the career mode. I'm planning to do the entire career mode, so I'll do a race per week, I guess, or a career mode per week. If this series really kicks off and you guys want to see more of it, then I will increase the uploads of Monster Energy Supercross 4. But for the time being, it does look like uh, Ride 4, MotoGP certainly take precedent on the channel, so it would make sense for me to focus on those ones first, and then Monster Energy and MXGP second. Of course, not that far away now, just over a month to go for uh, MotoGP 21. I cannot wait, really looking forward to that one. I'm also extremely close to 1,000 subscribers, so get yourself subscribed if you're not subscribed already, because I'll be bringing a lot of MotoGP 21 content, and I would also be extremely grateful if you could help me get to the 1,000 subscriber mark before MotoGP 21 arises. So a decent start for us so far. I'm really pleased to see we're still competitive because this bike has not been upgraded as much as I, as I mentioned. I did change the exhaust, I believe, and I think I added uh, just different brakes. I can't remember entirely, but I don't think the bike has been upgraded that much. I didn't get any skill points to this point as well. I did a little bit of the little bit of the tests and the career modes or objectives you do, sort of like there was on Monster Energy Supercross 3. Where you go to the practice area and do a specific sort of challenge. The challenge I've been doing at the minute was overtake so many riders in a certain amount of time, and then you get one or two or even three stars depending on your performance. So I did do those, but I didn't actually put any of the upgrades on because I wanted to test the bike first 
to see where we were struggling and see where the improvements would be mostly used. Now the one I didn't think I would use too much is I've not used many scrubs and I still don't to be fair. I should probably incorporate more scrubs into my videos and into my riding style, but for the time being it made sense more to go for better brakes and a better stability on landings and even on the acceleration. But with this only being a 250 motorcycle, it's not too bad, it's not that demanding compared to the 450s we were using in the live stream and in previous videos. But back here in Anaheim, I feel great. A really, really nice track, I feel very confident here. I took my very first win here in Monster Energy Supercross 4, so I'm very pleased to be back here in Anaheim. Not sure where the next race is going to be, but I'm hoping we'll be just as good as we are here in Anaheim. Of course, the rewinds are actually on the screen in the bottom left-hand corner that are there, as you can see next to the graphic. I didn't actually use any rewinds, and I probably won't because you get a bit of a bonus for not using rewinds. And I'm not a big fan of the whole rewind thing in general. Like, if I crash, then I, I crash. That's, that's my fault. <laughs> if, uh, I'm not going to bail myself out by using a rewind. Of course, Wolf is now closing in on Grant. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get through. But we're going to do everything we can and, and do everything in our power to stop him from getting through because leading this Grand Prix is much easier than trying to chase through it. Compared to the likes of Ride 4 and MotoGP, I do find, even though I'm MXGP as well actually, I do find that set, staying out on the front and just churning out the fast lap times, going all metronome on it, is a lot easier than trying to get through this very, very eager pack. I mean, there's a lot of riders here, there's 22 riders in total. So if you do make a couple of mistakes, especially when the flow is concerned, you will drop down to the latter positions and find it extremely difficult to get back through because the part that I find really difficult, as we wheelie a little bit too much there, is that once you lose the flow, you then try and get back into it, but there might be riders in those positions you want. And then once you try and get back into the momentum and the flow of things, you end up bumping into those and completely ruining your lines, messing up the jumps, and it just gets more harder and harder. As well now flick it left for the very tight left-hander, jump over to the flatter part, get ready to push backwards on the analogue stick to make sure we're pushing the weight into the back of the tyre. Now I messed that up a little bit, and we have now lost second place to McCormick. Madison's there as well, so we have to be very careful. And we do not want to be falling out of the podium positions and so close, or at least eight minutes away from the uh, finish here in the main event. Now I did only do the qualifying, I didn't bother with the last chance qualifying, heat races, etc. I focused on mainly on just doing the qualifying and then the race afterwards. If you want to include those ones, or if you want to see the inclusion of them, should I say, such as the qualifying, that's a beautiful move up on the inside, or uh, heat races and last chance qualify if necessary, let me know in the comment section down below. I did feel that the video would be a little bit too long, so I tried to focus just mainly on the, uh, the introduction and, of course, the main event. Now, the introduction does include Ralph Shaheen's commentary, and I think even Ricky Carmichael's there as well. I'm not sure if he was in it in today's, but I like to include that little bit of uh, part of Ralph Shaheen's commentary, because it's very good. I, I do like it. There's some robotic parts in there, because, of course, he's reading from a script, but most of it, the uh, commentary is very good. So, uh, all, all in all, the career mode so far, it, I would say, meets expectations. I'm, I'm pleased with it so far. I don't know what it's going to be like when we get to the actual main event stages for uh, the 250ccs and the 450ccs. Hopefully it can still maintain the same amount of momentum and be really good. But for the time being, we're only here in the beginning as the future prospect of Monster Energy Supercross. So seven minutes remaining as we uh, go over the tabletop section once more. Flick it left with a little bit of a hill. We could have been a little bit slower there on the rise, so then once you do actually make the jump, you land on the decline, thus resulting in a better traction and then give you more speed. Of course, that didn't happen this time, but we'll focus on that one for the next couple of laps. As they're still struggling with this first sector, when I did the 450 race, I was pretty good in this first sector, very reliable. But I can't say the same here right now. Oh, as we got a massive slide there, thankfully the AI's bumped me there, and the actual bump that he did helped me out because I slid the rear way too much and I then bumped into the AI which of course forced me straight opposed to be forcing me wide so thank you to the AI on that one now, I mentioned this a lot in the live stream and I've mentioned it before that the AI is extremely aggressive in this game to the point where they do not oh my goodness what on earth happened then an absolutely random act of whatever that hell oh my goodness what was that <laughs> the bike just stopped it just seemed to crash and nothing I had the same issue on the live stream where the bike just stopped 
I was doing everything all right, and next thing you know, it just crashes. So, not sure what happened there, but that is really, really sour luck for us. Now we've got five and a half minutes to catch up to the guys in front. A win is probably definitely out of the equation right now, but I'm pretty certain the podium is still in reach as of yet. But I must say, I'm a little bit miffed that that's just happened, because we were on a great rhythm there. We had a little bit out of shape, but we've begun to fight back against the aggressive AI. As Madison's on the right-hand side there. Pakella is a little bit further over. Let's just bump him on the top of the head there as well. Do apologise. So now going to the jump. Now ready to flick it left. Not bad, the game says on the jump. I didn't think that uh, even warranted a not bad. It was pretty bad, in my opinion. As Lopez, he's now into third place. Or fourth place, rather, if I could count properly. <laughs> As we go for a big jump. Beautifully done on the decline there. Not so much here. Maybe we'll go for a tighter line at this point. I do find with the 250cc bikes that they are much, much easier to use than the 450s. But at the same time, they're kind of harder to get the jumps right. Because you know you don't have that same amount of power. So it's a bit of a, a, bit of a mixed bag, this one. I think I definitely preferred using the 450s. We'll see how much we can improve as this championship continues. Matterson there on the right-hand side. He's bouncing over the tabletop section now. Can definitely have a lunge on him if he yep, if he goes to the little bit to the right there. Beautifully done. That's much better on the decline. Beautifully done. See how much speed we get by jumping on the decline properly? Excellent stuff. We now have Navarra ahead of us. The number 720. We're going for a tighter line. They chuck it up onto the burn there. Ooh. Bit of a bump. So we'll slowly make a little jump there so we get onto the decline or incline for this one. Then we can hold it left. Watch out for that monster energy sign. I bumped into that way too often than I would care to uh, admit. But I did keep doing it quite a lot. But we'll improve. We'll oh, Navarro went down. He's just gifted us the podium position. Thank you very much, P3, for us. I'm happy with that one. Although the game says not bad for a jump. I say it's absolutely fine and dandy. As we'll begin to push forward once more. Hopefully we can chase down McCormick and take second place. Because I do believe the first place position is out of reach as of yet. But who knows what's going to happen. We could have another faller ahead of us. Such as Wolf there. I think it was Thomas Wolf. If he ends up crashing once more. Or if uh, he crashed. No, I don't think he's crashed at all. I think he's been impervious in this one. He took the lead from me quite earlier on and has not looked back. McCormick has also done the same. He got past me and is still there. Much better on the decline there as well. A little bit of a bounce on the exit there. Not the best way to tackle that corner, but it's quite all right. This should be a nice, decent lap if we... Uh, yep, pretty nice. Not quite the 111-148 that we set earlier on, but I'm still pleased with that lap time. I think that's a very solid effort. I think the qualifying lap I set was a 109, so it's not close enough to that yet. We were really good in qualifying, by the way. I, I was really happy with my pace. I felt like this could be the start of something amazing. Unfortunately, this third place is not quite showing the same picture here. It's still a great finish in the debut, of course, but I think it could have been a little bit better if we managed to stay ahead. But Wolf had other plans, didn't he? He didn't want us to take that podium, or if he did, he didn't want to take us in first place. But McCormick is still there, and we are still closing. It's just a matter of time, I'm guessing, at this point. Not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Following the berms, following the lines, following the declines, brilliantly done. I've noticed he goes for a different line coming out of that corner there, but we are super quick on the tabletop section. Anyway, but now we'll dive it up on the inside of McCormick. We certainly do. One and a half minutes remaining of the session, and we are back up into the second place position. Good stuff so far. Watch the monster energy sign to your left. A little bit of a jump. This should be another decent lap. It's a, just a one. It's a one twelve, but at the same time, that's not all bad considering that McCormick was passed on that particular lap. Better exit there and a better jump. That is a much cleaner jump. The game's does not bad, but I think that's a little bit harsh. I think that was more like perfect. I'm really pleased with that one. Exit there has been ruined, and therefore we do lose second place to McCormick. Navarro crashed early on. is straight back on it, and he's in fourth place. Don't fancy him trying to uh, get past me again, though, and slowing me down. I'm trying to stay with it right now and give the best pace we've got. There's only one minute remains of this Monster Energy Supercross Grand Prix right here in Anaheim 1. Right on the rear of McCormick. Nice little jump, following to the decline. Perfectly, perfectly done. Push back on the analog stick. Push forward on the analog stick for the drop. And then follow his lines because he seemed to have found a nice rhythm. And we're getting that same sort of pace. Not the best pace, but it's still damn decent. I'm impressed with this one so far. 
James McCormick is about to lose second place. A little bit of contact made there between the two riders. He drops down into the decline. Oh, McCormick fought back immediately as 30 seconds of this Grand Prix remain. A little bit of a jump. Oh, slid the rear is up in like halfway up in the air. It's a good job that sort of corner ended, otherwise, we would have been slipping straight onto our bottoms and probably out of this Grand Prix. And McCormick is still not letting me go. Every time it feels like I've got an advantage and we're going to get through, McCormick fights back. He certainly did it again here. Wolf is way ahead of us right now. He's 8.1 seconds, so no way we can even look at him today. As the sound has sounded, the hooter has hooted, the siren has done its thing. It's now only two laps to the end of this Grand Prix, so it might even be a third place because it looks like we did lose a little bit of uh, ground to McCormick. Well, I'm quite all right. A podium finish on the debut is absolutely fun dabby dozy for me. And I'm sure it'll be all right for the aces as well. Hold it left into the burn we go. Full throttle to make this couple of jumps. Of course, you release the throttle so you don't carry too much speed. And then land into the decline. Up into the high berm. Over the tabletop section once more. We'll only be doing that one more time. And then it'll be the end of this Grand Prix of Anaheim 1. Well, we're closing somewhat, but not enough to say, yes, we're going to pass McCormick. I don't think we're going to be that close. It's a nice smaller jump there. Get ready for the big jump. Push backwards on the analog stick, and then push forward when you're reaching the peak. And then make a big jump. We're getting closer to McCormick. It's, oh, careful, careful, careful. Oh, my goodness. That almost ended in tears. The problem I had there was I landed down, like facing down on an incline. There was nowhere for us to go there but to continue to fight the motorcycle to put us in a somewhat stable position. So forget about the second place, forget about the first place finish. The cream has definitely rose to the top, but for the time being, we're going to be settling for third place. I'm going to be happy with third place, no doubt. Very, very much so. But can we take third place? Because Lopez is right behind. I do not fancy Lopez pinching our podium position. Not on the debut. We've worked hard for this. I really don't want to have this one pinched. I did restart once or twice, but that doesn't really matter right now. This is the race you're seeing. This is the race I ultimately ended on. And we're doing a great job of defending here. Just focus, just stay forward, just eyes forward and don't look back. Give everything we've got over the tabletop section. You can see ourselves in the camera up above. Over the bridge in a moment's time. Yeah, this one's ours. We've managed to hold on to the podium. I'm really pleased with that one. Wait for the fireworks to go off, because it's celebration time for all. Wolf wins, McCormack second, and Grant takes third. So those are your results of round one of the three races in this future mode. Thomas Wolf, Melvin McCormack, and Matt Grant take the podium positions. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And upon that note, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.